James Cook lands at Botany Bay and the Union flag becomes the first flag to be used on Australian soil. Australia would continue using it until they started to develop their own national identity. Ooh. And wanted a flag to represent it. Ooh. Today we're looking at the bold decision they made to change this flag and stick with it for the next 120 years, beating off all opposition to remain the largest economy to still use a British ensign flag. I'm Captain Hutch, you're gonna click subscribe so I can get the dopamine hit of hitting a thousand subscribers, and welcome aboard the flagship traveler. Flagship, 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 flagship. it's the flagship. So, they've got the Union flag, but what other flags existed in the country? There was the National Colonial flag created between 1823 and 1824, and the Federation flag in 1831, which was exactly the same, but blue. Keep an eye out for that sneaky trick later. This flag was the unofficial flag of Australia for over 70 years. There are other flags, such as the Eureka flag and the Anti-Transportation League flag, which represented opposition to Britain sending its prisoners to its colonies. Sorry about that. But it's also the first flag to feature the Southern Cross. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, you're welcome. In 1901, Australia becomes a federation and decides to host a flag design competition. Very democratic. It has to include a Union Jack and the Southern Cross. Not so democratic. They didn't have to include them, but flags that omitted these symbols might have a smaller chance of success. Right, so you did have to. <laughs> there were 32,823 entries, and here are some of the ones I could find. Big Union flag with Australia in the middle featuring New Zealand, and photographs of emblems of the four nations of the United Kingdom. Fun fact, there's more Welsh representation in this flag than in the actual Union Jack. Kangaroo, kangaroo, big, big fucking, fucking kangaroo. kangaroo. There were five winners with almost identical designs, which faced criticism for being too similar to the flag of Victoria, which it kind of was. And most importantly, it had no kangaroos. The five winners shared a prize pool of $200, which was $30,000 in today's money. Then began a chromatic debate that has troubled five-year-olds for as long as time can remember. What color should I base my entire personality off? Blue or red? Initially, the blue ensign was used by the Commonwealth government and the red ensign for use by the general public. For years, the red ensign was the prominent flag, although both were used. The blue ensign was ordered to be used by the military in 1908 and the red ensign was consistently used by merchant ships, similar to the UK. Then in the 1940s, the government started to encourage people to use the blue ensign, but there was still mass confusion about which flag to use. Only after the Flags Act in 1953 would confusion start to dissipate, where it was specified that the blue ensign was the national flag and the red ensign a merchant shipping flag. So let's look at the current flag and dissect what each aspect means. There's some pretty cool details in here. The stars on the flag all have a different amount of points based on how bright the actual star is. More points means brighter. However, the number of points and size of the stars would change over time depending on territories and costs. Sorry about this, just got to check if I'm working today. <laughs> but wait, it's now the early 90s and there's a different flag on the block, the Aboriginal flag, and it's kicking up a massive fuss. Loads of Australians, the white people, don't like it being used as a national flag. The flag was ordered to not be used as an official national flag, which caused it to be used even more. And I've got to say, it's a nice flag. But who created it? The flag was designed by Harold Joseph Thomas and was first flown in 1971 in Adelaide on National Aborigines Day. The flag symbolises Aboriginal people, the sun and the earth, a harmony of nature. However, you've also got another official flag, the flag of the Torres Strait, or Zenad Kez, a series of islands between Australia and New Guinea that was annexed to Queenstown in 1879. They designed their own flag in 1992. Land, islanders, people, sea, island groups, and navigation and peace. So in many ways, Australia does have a new flag, but despite mounting pressure, the blue ensign remains the primary symbol. But for how much longer? Flagship, 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 flagship. It's the flagship, 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 flagship. It's the flagship.